Hi guys, Bob Sheridan here again. Part two of the interior demo of accessories and equipment for my 1997 Ford F-250 truck on BAT. I uh, opened up the rear of the truck before starting the video so I could uh, make it easier to climb in and it's kind of hard to open it with one hand with the, uh, the locking. So I'm going to uh, slide up here. Okay. Uh, just barely get in the truck. Got my short legs. Okay, I'm going to show you quickly. Uh, just kind of take a little pan on the inside of it. I've got uh, that long box here. I'm taking over to FedEx in a minute. I've got the headliner. It's just like outdoor carpeting, sort of. It's very nice and nothing wrong with this camper shell. Okay, so uh, I'll show you real fast. These are the fasteners, just four on each side. They're a little corroded. Uh, they probably wouldn't hurt to have a little WD 44 on them, WD 40. And there's four on each side, as, as you said. So you just unscrew those. Get four guys, one in each corner, and lift it off the truck, and then you got a full-blown uh, truck bed. Uh, what people are more, more accustomed to seeing, but that'd be kind of nice to leave the, the top off during summer and put it back on during winter. That's kind of what I probably do. We have a lot of rain in the summertime here, so it's, Florida is a little bit. Where we live, it, it's, the climate's not that cold, so I probably would just leave the camper on the way it is right now. Anyway, I'm going to show you the operation of the window slides. Uh, I took the window screens off a couple weeks back, washed the windows, cleaned the slides, greased them, so I could literally open it up with one finger and close it. And go again. It's very easy. Okay, yep, very simple. Um, so this very nice little camper shell made by Snug Top. They don't, I uh, think they're in Mexico now. They used to be in Long Beach, California. But you can still get, uh, get a hold of them if you need parts or something. Um, the screens that I mentioned somewhere else, elsewhere, I took them off to access the window so I could clean them. And they have a couple little, one has a little hole by the side of a quarter and the other has a uh, couple little small tears, you know, a couple inches long. Uh, they can be re-screened. I can't do it. I'm not, you know, not equipped to do it. But there are places that could. And in fact, where the uh, there's a lot of uh, camper shell distributors in almost every big city. And I'm sure they could either replace them or rescreen them or tell you where to go. So I left them off to let the new owner decide if he wants to put them back on the way they are or have them rescreened. So I'm going to pick this up with my arm and go like that. I'll leave the top up for now. Okay. Just kind of like get some, some of the highlights chrome tipped. And uh, let's see now. I'll try to uh, let the truck locked over there. Okay. Show the key works. There we go. So keys work on both locks. the truck uh, about three months later I had to I left my keys inside the truck and the lights on overnight I was working on a video and I went in the house to do something and forgot to come back outside and the battery was dead the next day and my other spare key wouldn't open the lock and of course the battery ran down and the, the electric fobs key fobs don't work so I had to call a, uh, a uh, locksmith out who discovered that the, the tumblers in the lock on the door were jammed and gummed up and so he had to spend an hour 
fiddling with his his pick and his WD-40 or some some stuff he was putting in there. Finally got them all working. So it was worth worth having that done, I guess. So now the keys work on both doors. So I'm not worried about locking my keys in here anymore. So anyway, a, <laughs> okay. So we're back over here. Um, oh, I know what I was going to show you. Let's see. Let's get this door panel here in. Let's see what it, condition it's in. Got the safety light. It's in excellent condition. No, no damage in the in the least. Uh, they got the same pockets on the side and these pockets over here and uh, this open this guy up as well open it up cut him over here I don't know if I got that on film or not okay let's do that one more time just make sure I got it on camera push in with your thumb turn it to the left push this open you got your, your vent open and then closing it. It's just a matter of twisting it into place. There you go. Very easy. Um, let's real quickly go through the condition of it underneath the door. Um, oh, good condition. And the paint is. Just fantastic condition. Like it's just like brand new. I don't know how this paint has stayed so nice over the years. The weather stripping is fine. It's looking good on the other side. This side is probably not as critical doesn't get as much use as the uh, passenger side, so I wouldn't worry about the weather stripping over here. But I really would consider putting on new weather stripping on the passenger door just to, to live it, give it more solid uh, So here we go on the this guy here is showing there's no there's no damage, dirt, smudge, footprints, grease, anything else under the uh, carpeting there and uh, here's the other side of the dustman dustman with the vent, vent holes and here's the box and uh, the Ford uh, hand make handbook and service manual in here and a few other things um, I think there's a whole lot more I wanted to show over this side. I will work, go through the, the passenger seat operation has this lumbar, just like the other one, which is nice for long trips. But everything else is pretty manual. So if you're in front and you want to open the back seat, you can do that, put groceries in or something if you want to, and then push it back. And if you're in the back seat and you want to open, you just reach here and push down. Reach over here and just push this down, and it opens it so you can get in and out of the back seat. <coughs> um, maybe I got a picture of that antenna. I think that's the antenna for the CB radio. And here's a, another shot of the clean carpeting and the clean parts underneath the seat. It's just really in, in great shape. There's more uh, carpeting underneath. It's a big mat that goes across. There's no dirt, no stains, no tears. It's just really, really nice condition. And uh, one more thing I'll show you is the, um, the center console. There we go, like that. And climb in here. Okay. Oh. Uh, back as far as I want to be. Just it's another control over here. There we go. <coughs> I reached around my back to do that. 
So here's the center seat for the third person in front, your own seat belt. And if you want to pull this down, you've got two cup holders and you have see, two cup holders. Let's start that over again. Here we go, the seat. And then we pull it down like that. Got the cup holders. And then we have here a little storage. Not very big. Hold a little flashlight and some minor things in there. <coughs> a little junk drawer. Uh, we have a quarter holder, dime holder, and nickel holder, which used to be popular in the old days when you need to change. We don't really use change anymore. So that's that. I'm leaving those for the new owner. I got them from the prior seller, so I'll just pass them on to the next guy. Um, might want to do one quick little pan of the, of the uh, head, headliner here. Let's see, it goes all the way over here. There's the, this guy. It's in really nice condition. Um, there is a spot right up here. You can see it uh, somewhere over here. Oh, there it is. That's the little spot. There was a hole. The hole was already there, and then the seller did uh, mention that one before I bought it. I don't know how the hole got there, but uh, I went on the internet and found some a patch for putting some fiber in there with some glue. And um, so I did that. I probably could use another coat to patch it up, but uh, nobody could see it really. You wouldn't even notice it there. Like from way over here, you can't see it. It's barely, barely perceptible. So that is the interior. Let me just. Oh, you know what? I think I forgot to mention something on the first video. Maybe I did, or maybe I didn't. But just in case I forgot it, here's the, the, uh, the hood release. Just pull it, and that releases the hood. And just about run out of my battery here. I'm gonna see if I can open this quickly. There's a little latch down inside of here I need to grab with my thumb and I need to push down on the top a little bit. Push at the latch and then lift this up. There we go. It's very simple to do once you do it a few times. And I was just going to quickly show that it took me a while to find this, but this is a jack. If you ever have a flat tire and you don't have AAA or somebody to come out for your road service, this is the jack. And this little we nut. Turn that and you probably would need some pliers because it looks like it's on there pretty solid. So you might want to carry a little tool kit in the car. Um, in fact, I should have one in here myself. You just twist that and then the jack comes out. And I think this might be part of it. This uh, Underneath the jack is the uh, lug wrench. And then over here on the top of this rail is a thin tube it goes all the way over here, over here, over here. That is the jack handle. Very long and skinny, but it, I guess it does the job. So you have to, um, I guess while I'm at it, I might go under here and show you. Go back to the back of the truck. And uh, underneath, I can do this it's kind of dirty on the ground but uh, underneath the truck is the uh, spare tire and here is a something you get a long screwdriver and twist and that lowers that lowers this whole thing and then the tire will drop down and you slide it out and then you know I throw the spare one in the back of the trailer of the bed let somebody else put it back on. It's pretty heavy. 
So, uh, but that's where you would come, is to come here with some tool to bend that, twist it around, turn it, turn it, turn it, and then uh, take the tire out and take the lug nuts off, and then uh, there you go. I wouldn't want to have it happen to me, so I'm a believer in the uh, AAA roadside service. I had State Farm roadside service, and that was the worst thing I ever had, so I went back to AAA. Anyway, so much for that. Uh, I hope the videos have been of use. I kind of ramble on and I'm not a very good speak speaker, so. But uh, I think it's worthwhile knowing what you're buying, getting what you're paying for. Okay, so that would be the end of the uh, video. Good luck to the, uh, the winner. This is a fantastic truck. Really a great truck. Beautiful truck, got power to spare, good torque. It's uh, not as much torque as a diesel, but you know, if you're not going to pull a huge trailer with a big giant tractor on the end of it, this will pull any motor home and any trailer up and down the hills. Uh, I, I know that for a fact. So, uh, plus, this gets better mileage. Actually, it doesn't. It gets, uh, I guess it kind of evens out because of the cost of gas. So anyway, kind of rambling on too much here. So, uh, good luck to everyone. Bye-bye.